Hi Tappers! Sleep is one of those things that is highly impactful no matter who you are. If it's good, everything's better. If it's not good, everything suffers. Now there is enough awareness of what a lack of sleep does, I'm not going to spend time spelling that out. Instead, I'm going to lay out a few best practices for sleep and then linked to this video at the end is a new tapping sleep meditation that is specifically targeting the mind to agree that oh, sleeping is the best idea for now. Now this video idea was inspired by many community members, but Kate was the first. So if it is helpful to you, please leave her and the others some love in the comments. Now, before I was ever involved in tapping, I worked as a marketing director at a sleep lab. Now, when I worked there, I learned a few tips that I want to pass along to you. Number one, your bed is for sleeping. Anything else gets done elsewhere. Scrolling social, reading books, watching movies, get a comfy couch for that. You want your body to recognize that when you do this one specific action, it is for one specific thing. Going to bed means going to sleep. Using your bed for connecting intimately is fine, but don't use it to fold laundry. Retrain yourself, even if at first it's a huge pain. No more mixed signals. And if you are lying down, attempting sleep for more than 20 minutes, get back up until you feel sleepy. It is a super big pain to do, but this single factor can make or break training your brain to fall asleep when you lie down. Number two, create a routine of three to four things you do only in that order at bedtime. Turn lights down, turn off media, put pajamas on, brush your teeth and hair, take a shower, take a bath, wash your face, put lotion on your feet, write in a journal, whatever that looks like for you. Be consistent. This will give your brain time to begin the process of sending the chemical signals out to go to sleep. Start your routine about 30 minutes before laying down. Now, if you already have a lot of stress around going to sleep, make a short tapping a part of your routine of getting ready. Number three, give yourself permission to do what you need to do to make your bed a safe place. If you have unresolved trauma, sleep deprivation is a great way for your subconscious to keep you in a stressed state to trigger survival mode. Sleep deprivation is easiest if sleep is not your friend. If you need to check the doors three times before laying down, do it. If you need to check on the kids one more time, do it. If you need to lock your bedroom door, set a booby trap under your window, get a white noise machine, get a night light, get a dream catcher, sleep with a stuffy or a weighted blanket, support yourself in that. Maybe you'll move past it, maybe you won't, but the point is, you need it now. So give yourself that love and respect that you deserve by providing these simple requests. You aren't the only one needing any of these things, I promise you. Number four, make it inconvenient for you to break your routine. If you are stepping away from scrolling on your phone all night, leave your phone somewhere where you will have to get up to go get it. If you are eating sugar or consuming caffeine too late into the evening, put it up on a high shelf where maybe you have to go get a footstool to reach it and then set the footstool in the garage. And be open to just trying things out. If what you thought was going to work doesn't, then just try something else. Don't become attached to anything except the results that you want. When you get there, keep doing that. Now, I know these are simple and basic, but they have a profound effect on your brain and how it translates becoming ready to support you and going to sleep, and you need to build that habit. So click the pop-up now to go to the sleep meditation. It's a separate link, so then you can use it without any of this chatter beforehand. Save the other links. So you don't have to find it back here. I hope this helps. I'll see you soon.